Ladies and gentlemen, I ask that you please rise. On behalf of the faculty and staff, I present to you the 2019 Master of Quantitative Management class and 2019 Master of Management Studies class.
Please be seated. I'm Bill Boulding, and it's my great privilege to be Dean of the Fuqua School of Business. In my opinion, every day at the Fuqua School is a great day, but today is an extremely special day. And I'm very, very thankful for those who make this possible. Let me start with the stars of the show and the reason we're here, which is our graduates, our MMS and MQM students who've embarked on this journey that now brings them to this momentous occasion. But in a supporting role is the friends and family that are here with us and those who can't be with us who made it possible for you to achieve this moment. And in addition, we have faculty and staff who've guided your journey to, again, make this day possible. I'm very grateful for all of you to be here with us today to celebrate this tremendous occasion. Having said that, and expressing my gratitude for everyone who is here with us, it's also a very difficult moment in that someone is not with us. And I want to call attention to the fact that Erin Gong is not with us. She has been awarded a degree posthumously, and her degree was given to her mother and her uncle, who are here with us today to celebrate. And so, if we could, I'd like to have a moment of silence to recognize Aaron. Thank you. Every year, we recognize the faculty members who've been selected to receive the Award for Innovation and Excellence in Teaching. These awards are based on teaching approachability, continuous improvement, degree of challenge created for students, and use of innovation in teaching. Two awards are given to faculty members in the MQM program, one for a core class and one for a track class. One award is given to a faculty member from the MMS program. This year, I'm pleased to announce that the Excellence in Teaching Award for an MQM core class and a track class goes to Ryan Burke. Ryan teaches the Data Infrastructure Core course and Empirical Economic Analysis course in the Strategy Track. Here are some of the reasons why the students voted for Ryan. Comments were, he really cares about the students. He's extremely patient. I don't know why he would need to be patient. And then, this is a fascinating one, he left us no choice but to learn the material very well. <laughs> then there's, there's this one that has me very curious, which was we repeatedly heard from the students, he was somehow able to make Windows functions funny. <laughs> I guess that means something. So, But I am very pleased to present the core MQM Excellence in Teaching Awards to Ryan Burke. Ryan, could you step forward? All right, MQMers, thanks very much. Uh, Hard to believe that less than a year ago, I was greeted on our first day of class by your bright and cheery, smiling faces. But gazing out at you today, oof. <laughs> it seems like these 10 months have definitely taken their toll. 
Is this a graduation ceremony or a casting call for The Walking Dead? <laughs> Look, I get it, okay? You write that first sequel query and the utter joy and happiness and excitement make it tough to ever put that laptop back into sleep mode. In fact, I bet you're so hooked at, uh, on SQL at this point that if I checked your internet histories, I'd probably only find Stack Overflow, okay? Simply no time for Twitter, Instagram, or ZionBustedShoeConspiracies.com. In all seriousness, I have truly enjoyed the privilege of working, interacting, and collaborating with you throughout the program. You're a sharp group, and you should be proud of everything that you have accomplished. But don't rest on your laurels. I urge you to keep tinkering with new algorithms, approaches, and ideas. As I've said since day one, and I'm sure you're tired of hearing at this point, you're not going to learn it until you try. So everything in analytics is highly iterative, and the more you try, the better prepared you'll be for whatever comes next. And what exactly is next as you start your new careers in data? Well, unfortunately, nothing but a whole lot of nulls. Thanks again for this award, and uh, good luck in all of your future endeavors. The Excellence in Teaching Award recipient for an MMS core class goes to Noah Eisencraft. <laughs> Noah taught the Foundations of Management and Organizations course. And in terms of the feedback from the students that led to his selection, they consistently managed how he was always upbeat and enthusiastic, and that he did this in the face of addressing controversial topics that arise in management, while also instilling a sense of ethics and civic responsibility. I'm very pleased to present the Excellence in Teaching Award for MMS to Noah Eisencraft. When you win this award, they don't tell you there's a speech. There didn't have to be a speech. Ryan messed this up for all of us. But if I have to say anything, I have to say what an absolute treat it was teaching all of you. I know I normally work 10 miles the other direction, but Team Fuqua is real, and it was an absolute privilege for me to be a part of that team for a little while, and a real treat to also see all of you at the beginnings of your career. If you are what the future of business is, it is going to be a very bright future indeed. And as you go forth and you succeed and you make lots and lots of money, if you want to make lots of money, remember the people you went to the MS program with. They're going to carry you up. You're going to carry them up. It's going to be a really strong thing. And tell me how you're doing down the road, because it's been a real treat for me here. So thank you. Now I'd like to have Jeremy Petranka, the Assistant Dean for the MMS and MQM programs, uh, take over the next part of the program. Thank you, Bill. We are now gonna hear speeches from two of our students selected to represent their classes, beginning with Anshul Verma, speaker for the Master of Quantitative Management class of 2019. Ten months, 136 participants, 150 tasks, unpredictable weather conditions, miles away from home, put together under one roof. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Fuqua's Master of Quantitative Management program, adapted from the popular CBS TV series Survivor. This season came with a wicked twist where the participants were put on a roller coaster and asked to solve quantitative problems create visualizations, make presentations, network with random people, and the most important immunity task, get a job. 
But here we are all today at the finale after 10 months of this roller coaster ride. Some relieved, some looking for another month or two of this ride. Good afternoon, everyone. Today I have the fortune of representing the 136 winners of the season present here. When I was admitted to Fuqua, I had my own dream that I wanted to pursue. And exactly 10 months ago, I traveled from India, ready to meet the other contestants of this show. Time flew by, and Fuqua made a permanent impression in my memory. I will miss the Fox Center, where I could share my dreams with my friends. I will miss the team rooms, where I could work towards my dream. I will miss shooters, where my dream became hazy, but never out of sight, except maybe once. I will miss Cameron Stadium, where my dreams became a reality. Fuqua changed me every day, helped me be a better professional and a better person. To quote Henry Ford, coming together is the beginning, keeping together is progress, and working together is success. At Fuqua, we saw it all. And of course, we all had our highs and lows at different times along this roller coaster ride. High was when Professor Burke removed question seven from the sequel homework. And low was when you found out that question six and seven were the same questions. <laughs> High was when your model was 95% confident of rejecting the null hypothesis. And low was when you were 50% confident about the model in the first place. High was when Professor Belloni told you, that's the correct answer, good job. Low is when you realize that it never happened to any of you. High was when your closest friend got a job. And low was when, well, your closest friend got a job. <laughs> High was when President Obama came down for the Duke UNC game. And low was when Zion Williamson broke his shoe in that game. Life over the, ten, over the last 10 months has been much like Durham's weather, unpredictable. But we've always had someone sitting right by our side, helping us live and enjoy every moment and come out strong, stronger for the next part of the ride. Class of 2019, it has been an honor to share this ride with you. I would like to take this moment to thank all the parents, families, and friends here who have helped us in picking this place, leaving us in the hands of some of the best roller coaster designers in the world who made this ride less bumpy and much more memorable. Shout out to my parents who are here and my sisters. Uh, thank you for making it. And today, as we get off the roller coaster, we know it's just the beginning. MQM has prepared us for life. As the world of business welcomes the 136 winners from this program, we know when we look around that we are here to leave a lasting impact. We form the roots to be leaders in one of the most relevant and fastest growing industries. But success, much like happiness, increases when shared. And here's to us taking a step forward to giving back to the Fuqua community, internalizing the fact that when we grow together, we grow faster and stronger. Students, faculty, staff, families, please join me today to congratulate Master of Quantitative Management Class of 2019 on their graduation. Class of 2019, we're here to stay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anshul. I'd now like to introduce the class speaker for the Master of Management Studies class of 2019, Kirtana Chalapan. Wow. I have dreamed of this moment for months, to see all of us dressed in black, finally at the metaphorical finish line and what a breathtaking sight it is. Look back at those fun, yet unproductive team meets. Look back at all those awkward conversations that became lifelong friendships. Or even look around and remember all the times we sang along to every time we touch. We went from 10 months to 10 weeks to the final tens of minutes in this program. It is nearly impossible 
to express everything we've experienced in these 10 months in the matter of a few short minutes, but I will try my best. We stand at the edge of our future today. A few short months ago, we all made the call to attend Fuqua. And what a roller coaster of emotions it's been since. Do you remember the first time we rose together as we climbed the wall during triangle training? Or what about that time we learned statistics with Professor Luca using M&Ms? We've made so many memories together. And while we walk down memory lane, it's important to give thanks to the very people who paved way for those memories. I'd like to thank my mom, my dad, my brother, and my best friend in India, without whom this journey would have surely been impossible. And I encourage you to do the same. Let's give a big round of applause to everyone who's been a constant source of support for us in this journey. Thank you. Over these 10 months, we've learned so much. I hate to admit it, but I feel like we know an awful lot about the pharmaceutical industry and retirement planning than we should as people in their 20s, but still, a lot. But amongst everything we've learned, something called the flaw of averages stood out to me. It's the idea that plans based on average conditions generally tend to fail. And it's kind of reflective of real life. Coming to Fuqua really humbles you. We've been surrounded by such a talented pool of people. But amid such a pool, there inevitably comes a time where you felt just plain average compared to everyone else. And that's bound to happen here or anywhere else in the world. I'm not an Olympiad winner. I've never been into athletics. I didn't even ride the startup wave and co-found the next big thing. And sometimes it's a very crippling feeling, feeling like you're not good enough. We sometimes get so preoccupied with the desire to be unique that we lose ourselves. We forget the very things we were passionate about and chase after those resume building points just so we could be good enough. And honestly, it's just so tiring. We see being average as a flaw. But what's wrong with that? What's wrong with being average? What's truly wrong is never hoping to be something more, never hoping for a life that your heart truly desires. We all came to Fuqua with the desire to be something more. Today, some of us have found something we're passionate about, something that gets your blood pumping and makes your eyes shine bright. And surely, each of us has found something we truly care about, our own circle of friends, a social cause, or even a subject you secretly love nerding out about. So, class of 2019, till a few short weeks ago, our biggest problem was clearing that finance final. And before that, it was collecting these resume points. But we're graduating today, so now what? We've spent so long agonizing over the past and present that sometimes we forget to dream for the future. And as we walk our separate ways today, I want you to remember these key three takeaways from our time here at Fuqua. First, differences don't divide. We come from all across the globe. And I'm pretty sure on our first team meets, we all wondered how this was ever going to work. And truth be told, sometimes it's so much easier to find things that divide us than bring us together. Luckily, several awkward conversations later, we've managed to form lifelong friendships with people we would have never imagined being friends with. Second, don't be scared to be passionate. If anything, Fuqua has always given us the means and opportunity to either be passionate or ignite passion in the people around us. It's OK to love finance. It's OK to question unpopular opinions. It's OK to run 650,000 trials. 
Whether it was through the love of playing mafia or through sharing a piece of home through cultural events, we opened ourselves up to these experiences and have afflicted others with the enthusiasm we all have within us. So as you go out today, remember, never lose sight of the things that made you happy here. And finally, don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. Smile for all the game nights, karaoke sessions, free food, team meets. Smile because even though this is the last time, we had the honor of walking the journey together. And if I were to do it all over again, I'd have it no other way. Guys, we finally made it. Thanks for all the memories. And here's to a lifetime of memories in the making. Thank you. I'd like to thank both of our student speakers for terrific, uh, terrific remarks. It is now my very great pleasure to introduce the commencement speaker, Katie Bain. When we choose a, a speaker for graduation, we, we have very stringent criteria because it's such an important event for all of you. It's not only looking back at where you've been, but looking forward to where you can go. And we want to put someone in front of you who inspires you in terms of where you can go and what you can be. And so the first thing that we look for is we want someone who has lived a life of real accomplishment because we want you to aspire to similar levels of accomplishment in your own lives. Here, Katie has enjoyed tremendous success in her career. Currently, she's the founder and president of Bain Advisors, which is a strategic advising and consulting firm. But prior to founding that company, she spent almost 30 years at Coca-Cola, most recently as president of North American Brands and as a member of the Coca-Cola executive team. Currently, she plays many different roles in working with companies, both as an advisor as her core business, but also serving on various boards, including the board here at the Fuqua School of Business. And so the second thing that we look for is someone not only of accomplishment, but someone who's accumulated wisdom and insight that they can share with you. And here, I am absolutely confident that Katie will be able to share genuine wisdom with you. I know that over the last three years, I've, be I've benefited tremendously from her wisdom as a member of the Business School Board. But she's also serving in a role as an advisor to Guggenheim, and I happen to know the chair, the chairman at Guggenheim, who called me personally to thank me for Katie and the wonderful work that she's doing with Guggenheim. She also serves on the board, among other boards, uh, she serves on the board uh, of the Honest Company, which is founded by Jessica Alba. Some of you may know Jessica Alba more prominently as a very well-known actress, but she's founded this, this really interesting company. And Jessica has not yet called me to tell me how much she values Katie, but she did say this about Katie more publicly, which is she is a great outside the box, has a great outside the box and consumer centric mindset. So I know that Katie checks the box in terms of wisdom. But the third thing is, coming back to the idea of being a role model, is that we want someone who not only has achieved a great deal of success during their career, but that they've done it the right way. So that they've made their companies or organizations better while doing what's best. And here, Katie has certainly lived up to the, the real values and the ideals of Team Fuqua. She consistently makes people around her better. She consistently invests in others in order to bring out their best. She nurtures the strengths in others and actively encourages people to be authentic in their behavior and gets to know people not as colleagues, but as human beings. And that's why people have consistently given Katie their very best. The last thing that I'll mention in terms of the icing on the cake, in terms of what we look for in a commencement speaker, 
is someone who has a connection to Duke. And here, Katie has deep connections to Duke. She is actually a double Dukey with an undergraduate degree as well as a degree from Fuqua. And in fact, Katie is a former student of mine and proves the idea that overcoming adversity can make you better and stronger. So Katie, we're thrilled to have you here. Thank you, Dean Boulding, for that very generous introduction. And I'm honored to be here with all of you today. Thank you, esteemed members of the faculty and staff, proud parents, supportive friends, and families for coming from near and far to celebrate this fine class of graduates today. And thank you also for the insightful student speakers, Kirtana and Anshul. Thank you so much to both of you. I have to say, and pause for a minute, that you all look great, especially all the grads in your gowns. And each of you now has two of these. They're so formal and freeing at the same time. But you've worn one in your undergraduate graduation, and now again, as you prepare to commence. And actually, wearing these caps and gowns is a 900-year-old tradition. Today, you wear yours with the Duke colors of blue and white. As a symbol of your achievement, you've completed your degree, and now you're ready to start your next chapter. You all came here at the same time, but for very different reasons. Some of you came to the MMS and MQM programs to learn whole new skill sets, others to be taught by some of the finest professors and researchers in the world. And some of you just came to see great basketball. Parents, I'm sorry, it's true. Originally opened in 1940, Duke renamed this beautiful stadium for Eddie Cameron, who worked in tireless pursuit of excellence for Duke for 47 years. He was a revered coach and administrator. So what are you going to be known for after 47 years? What will be your legacy? What will you be? All of our lives, we strive for scores and grades and experiences that all add up to a great life of doing. And you all have an A-plus in doing right now. And that's admirable and measurable and important. But I'm a Duke undergrad psych major. Sorry, mom and dad, still not pre-med. But I propose that who you're going to be is far more important than what you are going to do. I have no doubt in looking at the composite backgrounds and grades of your class that you will be successful. But will you be a leader of consequence? This is the big difference between being a human doing and a human being. How do you want to be known? Are you gonna make the plan? Or are you going to be the leader that people could not wait to see walk through the door, who treated all colleagues well, and everyone else wanted to be like? That is about personal brand values. What are the things you're good at, and what will you try to be every day? Dean Boulding and I exchanged emails, and he encouraged me to share some thoughts on what I took, thought it took to be a leader of consequence. What is the secret formula? And I found four Bs, or ways of being, that help create leaders of consequence. I left Duke University and the Fuqua School 30, yes, 30 years ago. And when I went to school, things were different. We wore watches to tell time. Phones were on the wall at Duke, and you pressed buttons. Uh, we did research all in the library. There was no such thing as the World Wide Web. And we wrote papers in the Fuqua basement word processing room. And Dean Bolding, I'm sorry, Professor Bolding, had brown hair. <laughs> Since then, the Coca-Cola company took me on an amazing ride, with years living in other cities and countries, and all kinds of challenges and wonderful learning. 
and wishing I knew that secret formula of Coca-Cola. But the most important learning that I did was about me and what I wanted to be. My first job after Fuqua was a brand assistant on Diet Coke. You can imagine blue skirt suit, fuchsia man tie, and an annual planning job analyzing daily drinker trends. All oh, this puts me to sleep now. I had a great weekend. I walked into my boss's office on a Monday afternoon with the charts and handed them over. And she looked at me and she said, is this it? And I said, yes, here it is. It's the daily drinker changes over the last three years and significant changes over the last 12 months, just like you asked for. And she was quiet and sat back and said, Katie, I know you have the ability, but I wonder if you have the ambition to be a leader here. And she inspired me to change gears, literally. But it was not all smooth driving after that. I did hit some pretty big road bumps, and I'd like to share just a couple. I was working at Coca-Cola South Pacific in Australia when my new points of interaction merchandising program for 170,000 retail outlets got stranded out at sea in a shipping strike floating on the Pacific Ocean. With all of our bottlers, our installers, and our customers waiting, and I had a knot in the pit of my stomach. I called my dad, who was a sitting CEO at the time, he's right over there, and he listened, and he said, Kate, how long have you worked for Coca-Cola? And I said, five years. And he said, Kate, if you don't feel this way once every five years, you're not doing what they need you to do, and you're not being you. And sure enough, about five years later, back in the US, when we made the white Arctic home Coca-Cola cans, yep, that was me, and five years after that, in the 2014 Super Bowl, we ran America is Beautiful, which was, had, America is Beautiful has nine languages and nine dual language American citizens who sing the song to make the point America is beautiful and Coke is for everyone. It was viewed by most as a modern update to Hilltop or Mean Joe, but not by all. Each of these bumps were indeed speed bumps. The bumps got bigger, but so did the reward, both personally and professionally. We had the largest selling season in company history during Arctic Home when we made the red cans white, while raising environmental awareness of key customers. And It's Beautiful increased purchase intent amongst 20 to 29-year-olds by over 30%. That work has run again in two Super Bowls and three Olympics since then. So as much as I hated that sick feeling in the bottom of my stomach, I learned that it meant that we were pushing it and learning, and yes, screwing up a little bit along the way, but daring to make a difference and making it better. So I ask you, did anyone tell Zion to do a 360 dunk in the Clemson game right here? <laughs> no, no one did, and so the first B I have for you is like Zion. I learned to be a leader of consequence. It starts with the letter D. It is be daring. The next B is something that you will be very familiar with from Team Fuqua. My best learning about this was when I was president of North America. One morning, we had all of the brand teams presenting, 30 minutes, super efficient meetings. And while we were grabbing a sandwich, Andrew, a colleague, asked for a word. I said, sure, and remarked how great it was that we got through so much. And he said, yeah, we got through a lot. But there's a saying where I come from, where I'm in Alabama, nice hat, nice belt, nice shoes. And I've never forgotten that. In my hurry to get through all our decisions, I had not demonstrated any understanding of my team. I was trying to solve everything myself. The simple fact is, you're not going to make it, none of you, on your own. There will be times when you think you have all the information you need, and you don't. Or you plan for things to happen, and they won't. Those times you need to deeply understand the value of having teammates of diverse experiences, approaches, and thinking for better collaborative solutions. This is the most important thing you can take away from Team Fuqua. So the second B I learned that it takes to be a leader of consequence starts with a U, and it is understanding. Be understanding. This next B 
comes from something we are taught as children. One of my mentors said to me early in my career, you're going to have a lot of decisions to make. But whatever you decide to do, you should be proud to have it printed in the New York Times. Well, no one reads the printed New York Times anymore. But I've updated that and translated it into key points that I think about whenever I make a business or decision in my personal life. One, would it be something I would be proud to tell my husband or mother or father about? And second, would it be something I want my two children to copy and learn from? They're 16 and 20, so it's a, it's a pretty high bar. When I left Coca-Cola after 28 years, we had a fun party, and I was lucky enough to have colleagues from different parts of my career ask to say something. Not one person spoke about beating the plan, or surprising competition, or getting that extra bonus pay that year. The speeches were about small moments that were personal, moments where I had been simply kind. One was for calling out a very important customer publicly for mistreating a female colleague at an NCAA hospitality event. Another was protecting a creative agency partner and standing up for his right to be heard at a pitch meeting long ago. And another was just handing Kleenex under the stall in the ladies' room to a teary friend that needed it. It was about the moments, big and small, when I remembered what I learned as a child, which was to be respectful and be kind. Nothing teaches you more than personal struggle, yours and your teammates. Kindness is not a weakness. It is what lasts, and it is what you will be remembered for. So B number three, in terms of being a leader of consequence, starts with the letter K, and it is be kind. And finally, my fourth B, and I anchor this story in a mistake that Dean Bolding made in my introduction. Yes, occasionally, even Dean Bolding makes mistakes. He forgot to mention that I was on the basketball team while I was an undergraduate and graduate student here at Duke. Yep. We had three Final Four appearances during that time, and my teammates like Jay Billis, Johnny Dawkins, Christian Leitner, Quinn Snyder, and Danny Ferry. Yes, I was the sixth man during all of that time. I didn't miss a game in this arena. Why? Because Coach K made it clear that the sixth man was as important as anyone else on the floor. You didn't miss a game, and you never sat down. The entire time, that's right, parents, this whole level is students who never sit down the entire time the Duke team's on the floor, the other five players, because we are accountable for the energy in this arena. This B is for your benefit and the benefit of your teams, but even more importantly, the benefit of your friends and your families. Think about it. If you come to work each day and your leader walks in stressed and tired, how do you react? Or if you come home every night exhausted, does anyone want to be with you? The research is clear. The number one differentiator for high performance athletes, teams, and businesses, and the most difficult thing to maintain is energy. With the advances and conveniences of technology, there are no longer any natural beginnings and ends to our work days. And so we sacrifice the three things you need that give the human body and mind energy. One, nutrition. We eat unbalanced meals on the go. Exercise, we don't have time for workouts. And rest, we work around the clock. But without proper energy maintenance, and only you can take care of this, no one can take care of it for you, all productivity and relationships will suffer. Personally, I'm doing OK on nutrition and exercise, but I need to work on my rest and sleep. I would say this B is the most important for all of you to become the leader of consequence that you are all destined to be. So the final B starts with the letter E, and it is B energizing. So in closing, it's been a privilege to be with all of you today. In just a little while, you'll walk across this stage, and you will join roughly 250,000 Duke alumni globally, and I, and all of the other alumni promise the doing will happen 
as long as you keep the being in front of you. So be a human being, not a human doing. Make us proud wearing the blue and white. And now I have shared my secret formula for being a leader of consequence from D-U-K-E. D, be daring. U, be understanding. K, be kind. And E, be energizing. Here's to all the MMS and MQM classes of 2019. Congratulations to you all. So many, many thanks, Katie. I, I am so deeply apologetic that I skipped over your very distinguished basketball career. Uh, but that was a, an absolutely terrific speech, and you clearly exemplify what it means to be a leader of consequence, and you are, you are being uh, that very thing. So if I could please give you... a, a token of appreciation for your magnificent basketball career. Signed by her coach, yes. <laughs> and now I'd like to turn things back over to Jeremy. Thank you very much for that. At this time, we would now like to acknowledge a few specific graduates during the ceremony. For each graduating class, we recognize the top 10% of students for their academic achievement. These students are designated as Fuqua Scholars and are noted in your program. I'll read the names of the Fuqua scholars alphabetically, and I ask that as I reach each name, as I read each name, that person stand in his or her place and stay standing. Now this is hard, but I'm gonna ask the audience to wait until I read all the names before indicating their support and congratulations. So hang tight before you cheer if you don't mind. So first, the Master of Quantitative Management Class of 2019 Fuqua scholars are Stefanos Bazanos, Ding Nang Zhao, Hao Yu Zhen, Wan Li Zhen, Avram Lieberman, Le Quan Lo, Prafula Dadampali, Jason Oteng Ayam, Nyok Pham, Anshul Verma, Hung Vu, Teng Sheng Zhu, Haiyang Yuan, and Jingwan Zhang. Please join me in congratulating the MQM Fuqua Scholars on their outstanding achievement. You can be seated. Now, I would like to recognize the Master of Management Studies class of 2019 Fuqua Scholars. Same rules. So once again, I ask that each student stand in his or her place and the audience hold their applause until I've read all the names. The Master of Management Studies class of 2019 Fuqua Scholars are Robin Bernier, Dakota Brinkman, Tian Chu Chen, Shi Ying Chen, Ron Duan, Radhika Garg, Julian Govartz, Agasav Jabrayilov, Yushuan Li, Hui Wen, Nicholas Shafiq, Anam Wabjid, Yalan Zhang. Please join me in congratulating the MMS Fuqua Scholars on their outstanding achievement. You may be seated. Now it's the time to individually recognize all of our graduates. The actual diplomas are going to be distributed immediately following the ceremony at the reception in the Fox Center that we hope you can all join us for. Today, we want each of our graduates to come forward to be recognized and congratulated by Dean Boulding, Katie Bain, and myself. We'll begin with the Master of Quantitative Management graduates. We ask that the graduates file up to the stage on your right, and as your name is called, accept your scroll and our congratulations. At this time, I'd like to ask Alistair Erickson Ludwig, Assistant Director of the MQM Program, and Meredith Bolin, Associate Director for Career Services, to please come forward and read the names of our graduating students.
Anshul Verma. Kanak Agarwal. Mariam Ahmad. Nesabeli Abikazu Azikin. Stefanos Bazinas. Ja Hui Ben. Vibhav Bhatia. Gia B. Raghavinda Bishnoi. Vandita Butra. Uni Kao. Coco Chen. Vachagan Darvian. Christopher Davis. Timothy Salvatore De Campo. Shuyang Ding. Niti Doshi. Zachary Dao. Lingru Duan. Pritika Vinay Goal. Ariel Goldberger Rico. Mel Hunt Ghost. Kenneth Gordon Greenwood. Jack Coleman Griffin. Michael Alex Gusev. Rishab Gurnani. Samia Haimora. John Michael Hayek. Andrew Hua. Jingwan Huang. Russell Huang. Eno G. Shantanu Jadav. Ayush Jaswal. Dingnan Ja. How you Jin Wanli Jin Chitabir Prince John Yuen Khan Shenke Kao Agastya Kapoor Mehak Kana Gilbert Kagundu Han Su Kim Adil Rafi Kazake Palace Zenyang Kong Toyosi Demulola Laditan. Eric Michael Lau. Taewoon Lee. Wung Sung Lee. Boyuan Lee. Michelle Lee. 
Richard Shi Li. Thomas Lee. Shi Hui Li. Yuan Li. Lu Lian. Avram Lieberman. Jinke Lin. Zijun Ling. Jinkai Lu. Zian Lu. Lei Quan Lo. Wen Lu. Ding Lu. Menching Lu. Wenli Ma. Patrick McCann. Safe Mayar. Michelle Minton. Nikate Mokashi. Hari Morali. Anurag Mailavarapu. Prafala Nandimpali. Raul Narula. Yija Nye. Emily Sarah Nightingale. Ikpamwosa Felix Ogbedi. Jihan Oklap. Chidi Anwuka. Jason Tony Oteng Nayami. Jack Pang. Nidi Sudan Patrapati. Ain Mi Pham. Stephanie Pham. Sun Patrapasit. Wendy Chiang. Minyang Sin. Anshul Raj. Akshay Rakesh. Maxwell Rank. Shoshi Ren. Nishant Sangvi. Miguel Sastre. Arda. Arda Sertel. Mia Shang. Rachel Shi. Shuang Shi. Yanming Shou. Siam Shujat. Bupesh Singh. Mayank Singh. Tapiwa Lionel Sondai. Stella Su. Susan San. 
Priya Darshini Swaika. Ikenna Ralph Ugu. Emir Ure. Hong Vu. Patrick Walsh. Thomas Wildman. Camden Taylor Williford. Michelle Wong. Heidi Binjie Xie. Tiancheng Shu. Janet Yan. Chenxin Yang. Hayang Yang. <laughs> Wubin Yoon. Do you want your middle name? What? Arthur Fedorovich Zaripov. <laughs> Gan Chang. <laughs> Jingyuan Chang. Leah Zhang. <laughs> Junfeng Zhang. <laughs> Melinda Zhang. <laughs> Sharon Zhang. <laughs> Zhengdong Zhang. <laughs> Wenying Zhao. Annie Jo. Roma Zubair. Congratulations to the Master of Quantitative Management class of 2019. And at this time, I would now like to ask Lisa Thompson, Program Director for the Career Management Services for the MMS Program, and Alistair Erickson Ludwig, Assistant Director of the MQM Program, to please come forward and read the names of our graduating Master of Management Study students. Kirthana Chalapalan. <laughs> Sultan Ayubami Adabayu. <laughs> Shivam Ergawal. <laughs> Ishita Ahuja. <laughs> Olubukola. Adijat Ali. <laughs> Luca Robert Allison. <laughs> Lara A. Alulayan. <laughs> Anna Almeida. Gabriel Arind Tim. Oh, 
Robin Joy Bernier. Nicholas Evan Bernson. Tianshu Chen. Shu Chen. Joey Chen. Qiying Chen. Chi Yu Chen. Tara Jane Christensen. Sivert Dali. Melika Dertel. Tina Aramanchi Diwobi. Ran Duan. Dhruv Dugal. Wasal El Hachimi. Kevin Fucht. Louie Gao. Radhika Garg. Jatin George. Tessa Alexandra Gote. Julian Pierre Govarts. Jessica C. Grant. Vanessa Genfi. Josiah J. Hanko. Hyder Hyrun. Matthew Hu. Daniel Harwood Hull Fosas. Lizzie Isgar. Agasov Jabrailov. Jiayi Jiang. Ginika Kathuria. Jiwan Lily Kim. George E. Kutsapoulos. Shreya Kokarni. Mahir Shashank Kokarni. Kiwin Lai. Min Ji Lee. Bria Jojo Lewis. <laughs> Yunwei Lee. Hai Lin. Lavanya Lipica. Winyu Lu. Shosho Ma. 
Christopher Joseph McGrath. Edward Broken Row McNally III. Hisham Mohammed. Manvita Reddy Muporu. Hui Net Wen. Tagoriamba Hadasa Nunge. Maxine David Obadiah. Zun U. Ria Hadaval. Riva Harik. Janavi Prakash Patil. Michael Quinton. Tamara Rad. Divya Batri Rajaskaran. Zavi Ramos. Utra Ranganathan. Sheridan Liam Riley. Elizabeth Page Roberts. Sophia Laura Roma. Tanda. Chris Saunders. Akeem Klaus Schwemlein. Dora Johanna Serres. Nicholas Anthony Shafiq. Anash Pramesh Shah. Darmal Shah. Garbani Singh. Radhika Singhal. Warasara Satesini. Divya Srinivasan. Ganshan Sun. Sean Christopher Seskovich. Hamza Hussein Bolkari Syed. Christopher George Taylor. Sahar Tommaso. Adam Unger. Napak Wei Shalamint. Anam Fatma Wajid. E. Wong. Wan Hao Wong. Colin Dennis Wareham. Perry Michael Wong. Winna Wu. Wenqing Yen.
Jeremy Yang. Kun Yun. Sardor Yusupov. Alexandros Christos Zafaris. Yalan Zhang. Yuki Zhang. Congratulations to the Master of Management Studies class of 2019. So you are now graduates. So congratulations to the 2019 classes MQM MMS. We're done with the ceremonial part of things. Um, and so I'd just like to thank some people here. I'd like to thank Katie Bain once again for her terrific commencement address. The student speakers, the, the faculty and staff, and deep appreciation for the friends and family who are here with us on this special day. Um, I'm going to ask that the friends and family in the audience remain seated until the faculty and all the graduates have recessed out of the auditorium. And immediately after the, uh, the ceremony is here, you're all invite us, invited to join us in the Fox Center to celebrate this great day. Uh, before we do that, though, I'd like to ask all of the graduates to rise. And I'd like to speak to you directly. This is my last chance uh, as, as students. There'll be plenty of chances as alums to, to have a conversation with you. But I'd like, to, I'd like to thank you and make some requests of you. So the thanks, first of all, do a thought experiment. The thought experiment is think of yourselves the first day you came here and then the day you're at right now and think of all the changes in your lives that have happened and all of the growth, the development that you've been through. And now do another thought experiment, which is to think about how we've changed as a consequence of your being a part of our community. Because the fact that you've been here with us has very much transformed the business school. And for that, I thank you from the bottom of my heart because you've fulfilled the basic mission of leadership, which is to leave a place in better shape than when you've arrived. And that will be your legacy, to leave this place in better shape for the students who will follow you. And for that, I'm very, very grateful. Now, every graduating class always asks me the following question, which is, what is it that makes us different relative to other graduating classes? And I used to take that question seriously and try to say, well, you do this differently, you're special in this way. But then I finally figured out that what you really cared about was not how you were different, but you wanted to know, are we the best class ever and are, are we your favorites? So let me just address that question. Last year, this question was very easy with the MQM class. There was no question that last year it was the best MQM class ever. The fact that it was the only MQM class had nothing to do with it. The MMS program has been around a few more years, so this is, this is challenging on an ongoing basis for MMS, and it's now more challenging with the MQM program. But the answer in both cases is unambiguously yes. You are the best classes ever, and you are my favorites. Now, please understand that next year, I should be saying exactly the same thing to that class. 
And if I'm not saying that, that means we failed in our collective responsibility to make sure that we get better and better and better every year. So now let me turn to the requests. And no, it's not to ask you for money. Plenty of those opportunities are in front of you, I assure you. But four things that I ask of you. The first one, a number of people have said this to you, but please, please, show appreciation to the people who got you here. The people that are here with us today, the people who can't be here with us, but make sure you acknowledge that this is a team sport. You never get anywhere on your own. You get there with the help of others, and make sure you thank them profusely and thank them often for making this day possible for you. The second request I have is please stay connected to us. Don't forget us. Don't go off to different parts of the world and think that your connection to Duke was transient, that it was only meaningful while you were a student. Because if you think about your own experiences, think about the role that previous graduates have played in your own experience as a student and how much they've enriched your experience by giving back to you. And so I hope is that you, in turn, will give back to future generations of students. The third thing I'm going to ask of you, I'm sure as soon as I say it, you'll immediately dismiss this as you don't have to ask. We'll do this. But there's no question that all of you have joined a great team. You've been a part of Team Fuqua. And during this year that you've been with us, you've developed incredibly deep bonds with one another. And the thing that I'm going to tell you is, do not let those bonds dissipate. Make sure that you keep those friendships active throughout your lives. And you'll say, of course we'll do that. You know, we, we're so deeply committed to one another. But I have news for you. Life comes at you fast. You will be distributed all over the world. Things will be happening. And what's front and center will not be your classmates the way it is today, the way it has been over these past 10 months. So you will have to make an effort. You will have to make space. You will have to make sure that you nurture these relationships, which really should be lifelong relationships that will lift you throughout the course of the journey ahead of you. And the last request I have of you is very simple, which is, for all of you, I request that you live lives of success and significance, that you choose to make a difference in the lives of other people. If you remember when I spoke to you when you first joined, I talked to you about how this is a happy community. And happy is a word that describes this place, not just because we have fun, but it's happy in the sense that Aristotle meant it, that we make full use of our talents along the lines of excellence, and that we push one another to make the most of what we have. And so I want all of you to be happy as you move forward and to be leaders of consequence. Thank you very much.
Thank mm-hmm. you.